Good morning, good evening. This is uh, Rubina Kodadin. I'm an artist, a healer, and a spiritual guide. I'm here on Nadia's channel, who I thank very much for having me uh, with you. Um, after a little while, I've done a few videos, so if uh, we've seen before, hi. <laughs> and if we haven't met before, um, welcome here. So we will be looking at the January 2024 full moon, which is happening in Leo. So this video will be as such. There will be, an, I will give an overview of what's going on and also a guidance, which is, which is relevant to each and every one of us. And then um, I will briefly touch at each sign um, for specific guidance. So what is uh, the moon? The moon is linked with our innermost feelings, innermost thoughts. The moon is also the water element. Moon is linked with emotions. Moon can also enhance our intuition. Moon is also linked with the time element because um, moon goes from being invisible to full so there's a big time element which is um, relevant with the moon and more so with the full moon because full moon is all about the moon um, going to its higher state so when the moon is going to our higher state we tend to also go to our higher state so whatever I've mentioned before uh, in the most feelings emotions whatever is under, underneath there can all um, can be enhanced so there's a bursting there can be a bursting of creativity bursting of expression also bursting of foolishness and mediocrity <laughs> and our own instability sometimes because uh, the full moon will enhance whatever is lying um, within us I mean not will enhance can enhance because how the full moon affects us depends on our level of sensitivity for instance because I'm a healer uh, and I do I, f I feel people, this is how I can do healing sessions, my sensitivity goes um, very high right from two weeks or one and a half weeks before the full moon and even after but mostly before so um, depending on your degree of sensitivity depending on your degree of awareness as well because the more you're in touch with your emotions the more you will know that you're feeling the full moon and then uh, what also the full moon um, affects it depends on what's going on in the sky so just as we are influenced by the moon and the full moon she herself is influenced by the rest of the planets so um, at this specific time the moon is in opposition to the sun but that's normal because that's what how we get a full moon when the sun is um, lighting up the moon in a, in a way so that's normal but also what's happening this time is that um, as you might know Pluto is is in conjunction with the Sun so the Pluto is also um, is also in opposition to the moon at this time so at the time with the Leo full moon Pluto and the Sun are in Aquarius so what it means is that Pluto, we know, we know that Pluto, we've probably heard about it, that Pluto is about transformation, about death, rebirth, about hidden things. But in this opposition, what it, what it also means is that it sort of nudges the moon to look at what could be hidden, how our maybe some deep feelings, deep emotions are hidden. So before going through any sort of transformation or whatever uh, there is a need to look at those inner feelings it's also meaning to look at sometimes what is happening on our on a subconscious level which is what we might not see but what is there what we call beneath the surface so the very very first guidance for you for us <laughs> is before um, looking at what can be transformed which is what probably um, what Pluto is about etc and what can be expressed which is what the full moon in Leo is about uh, we definitely need to learn to process our emotions this is a, a guidance for the full moon for the moon for everyday life but specifically in this full moon because um, moon is in Leo moon is water Leo is fire water and fire don't necessarily kind of blend in together um, so 
we might kind of not want to process our emotions. The other thing is that um, Sun and Pluto are in Aquarius. Aquarius is an air sign. So again, the air sign is more about thinking, about knowledge and about talking, <laughs> but not necessarily about wanting to delve into the feelings, into our emotions. So um, processing the emotion is going to be vital because we might sort of, uh, the tendency might be that we want to neglect the processing of the emotions and because Leo is a little bit flamboyant and bold, we might want to kind of go direct to expression and, uh, and thinking. Aquarius, Pluto Sun, and not want to process the emotions, which means that we can sometimes take decisions which are not necessarily um, fair to us or to others. So uh, processing emotion is the very first big guidance and uh, for that I won't go into, into this video, this is not the point of this video, so I will I'll get you to look at my YouTube channel which is linked in the description box below um, so you can there's so many uh, information and things about uh, videos about emotions including process emotions so that's the very very first guidance so as I mentioned um, moon is in Leo Sun and uh, Pluto in Aquarius so let's look a little bit more at what those um, signs mean and what those planets in those signs mean to understand better this full moon um, Leo is about is the me energy <laughs> which we we'll also talk about as ego and um, ego not necessarily ego is there for everybody we all have an ego and it has got a purpose but it's not so much um, ego as in my ego but more me my desires my wants me 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 leo is also a little bit about um, courage and this bold energy aquarius is about um, more about we because Aquarius tends to be around the collective but collective isn't necessarily collective as in humanity collective can also be groups of people others your family so Aquarius is more about we and also about being diplomatic so Sun and Pluto in Aquarius um, they kind of are strong this kind of we opposition can be very strong but me in Leo is also very strong so especially as I said as Leo and Aquarius are fixed signs there can be this very um, strong opposition and and even bursting out of emotions which is why I just talked about processing the emotions and especially that there is um, um, Sun and Pluto are making a T-square with Jupiter. Usually Jupiter can help us because Jupiter is supposed to be the planet of, of truth, of uh, abundance, of uh, expansion. But that's the point. Jupiter is a planet of expansion. So as it's making what we call a T-square, Jupiter in Taurus making a two square with the moon and the um, and uh, Pluto and uh, Sun it can bring this me and we tension even more and the good thing about this is that it kind of pushes for the truth I say the truth but ugh, there are many different truths sometimes but Jupiter if we sort of learn to um, maybe look at the underlying truth not just my truth but let's say a more general truth we can be we can become closer to this Jupiter energy and prevent it from making so much tension um, between Pluto and the full moon so the second piece of advice for all of us it is simple it's after we process our emotion is maybe um, look at things on a truthful basis look at things and also on a very um, pragmatic basis because Jupiter is in Taurus right so Taurus is a is a is a earth sign so it's not so much the truth as in just kind of the higher truth but also the realistic 
truth. Let's say um, with the full moon in Leo, maybe you will hear on, on many videos on, on YouTube that they will say express the lion within you and be bold, be expressive. Yes, sure. But um, what if being expressive is not possible just at this minute, but we can make steps towards it to be expressive. So the truth is that yes, I want to be expressive, but maybe the truth is also I can't for whatever reason. So instead of getting kind of frustrated about this, I know my truth, but then I put steps towards this truth on a more pragmatic and practical way. Um, so learning, so being very conscious of our truth, that's sometimes how we can achieve that, sometimes by just writing, writing whatever is going on in our mind, so the mind becomes freer and then we can achieve, we can kind of reach a more sort of peaceful conclusion or sometimes it could be through conversation with others that we can uh, understand better the truth under the matter. And the good news is that uh, um, Venus is also is in Capricorn. So Capricorn is also a sign that invites us to be pragmatic. Venus is about um, asking us to bring some grace, some compassion. So grace and compassion together with discernment um, can help to release the tension between the I and the we um, and prevent possibly outbursts, prevent possibly resentments, but again once our deep-rooted emotions are processed. Because sometimes what happens is because Pluto is sort of forcing us towards changes. Sometimes we might push for the change, especially with the uh, full moon in Leo. We might push for the change, but not really, not in a, not really being at peace with that. So then it can create later regrets. It can create resentments. So. Um, and I see it all the time with my clients because, um, as you know, I do one-to-one -one healing sessions. Um, actually, if ever you need one-to-one -one healing sessions, guidance and etc., uh, the link is in the description box below how to get in touch with me. So as I was saying that I see that all the time with my clients. I tend to have clients who are very aware, <laughs> who've done lots of inner work, but more so on their consciousness and on their awareness, so they are very aware of things. But what I see often is that there are so many pent-up resentment, emotions, hurts from before that haven't been processed at all. So uh, what happens is that they have troubles moving forward with positivity, they have troubles moving forward with faith, So, um, uh, which is why I was talking about uh, truth but also uh, compassion. Okay, so um, I think it's probably time that we look at um, the individual signs and um, I will start by um, Gemini, the reason being that um, um, I will give a very, very direct and uh, pragmatic, practical example and how this is playing out. It's a very personal example, so <laughs> um, I, I hope it speaks to you. So I'll start with Gemini and then move on to the other signs. Um, so yeah, so make sure you, first of all, you, um, you go to Gemini and then you go to the other signs. And what do you look at? It's better to look at your rising sign. That's how I feel it's more effective. But you're also welcome to look at your sun and moon sign if you want to. It's up to you. So for now, I'll say goodbye um, and, um, and I'll meet you at your sign. Um, thank you for being here. and. See you in a bit. Hello Gemini, Gemini Rising. Um, as I mentioned in the overview, which uh, if you haven't looked at, I invite you to, to listen first. Um, this full moon is happening in 
the third house third house which is linked with communication day-to-day -day life day-to-day -day thoughts even so this is where the full moon is Pluto and uh, uh, Pluto and the Sun are in Aquarius which is going to be in the ninth house so the conflict potential conflict or I was should I say tension is between I expressing myself the way that I want, the way that I feel, the way that I know versus we, what is the best way to, what the collective wants, what, what is the, maybe the, my clients or the people that are listening to me, the broader audience wants. So there can be this tension between I, my way of expressing and what is more a collective way of expressing. So, um, as I explained in the first part, is um, I will illustrate um, by um, giving a concrete example how um, we can work this through. Uh, as I said, I am a Gemini rising, <laughs> so I will be the guinea pig for this uh, for this um, explanation. Look. Um, I usually um, make all the videos I make are all inspired to me. So um, I never really have to research because they are inspired to me and also based on personal experiences and experiences by my clients. So that's the way I uh, like to speak. That's the way I feel I have to speak. However, um, to make this specific video, when I've been asked to make that by Nadja, who I thank again for having me here, um, it did trigger some emotion because I realized that I would have to um, talk a bit more specifics regarding the planet and for each sign, which is not what maybe usually I would do or I feel more comfortable doing. So there is the potential tension between what I, Rubina, <laughs> would um, maybe naturally express and how maybe the approach I should be taking for this video. So um, as I said in the first part, there are some emotions that come up and yes, there was some, maybe some um, maybe some fear that came up for me. I talk in the past tense because um, this video is made before the full moon, which is happening on the 25th, and this is where usually I feel everything, so sometimes well before. So maybe there has been a, a sort of fear and also a feeling of like, um, why do I need to research about these specifics? But then again, uh, Pluto being in the ninth house, which is uh, linked with Jupiter in um, this T square, Jupiter in, in Taurus, which is about being very practical, is also inviting me to maybe um, research a little bit, enhance my knowledge. So by enhancing my knowledge, I can give a guidance which is more precise for you. And at the same time, I can still express myself and um, Venus being in Capricorn, Venus is about creativity etc. So I decided to link my own creativity which is my way of expressing myself together with maybe the artwork as you see for each sign there is a little piece of artwork which is artworks I've been making over time. So this is how maybe um, I had to process some of the emotion and then um, there is Pluto asking me to open myself up as in maybe uh, be to learn more about the specifics and talk about the specifics of the planets and together with my own creative way. So this is how uh, for me with third house, ninth house, and uh, Taurus and Jupiter, Venus and Capricorn. This is how I sort of navigated um, this, this, uh, this, um, this aspect. So for you, it, might, it will be different, obviously, because we're not the same people, but definitely there is a need for the whatever underlying emotions are to, 
to be there to know what is your truth but also what is required of you maybe from whatever let's say you're at university ninth house is also higher learning what is required from you at university and how you can blend all this in a very creative way um, I hope that makes sense I hope that's helpful <laughs> so um, yeah in the description box the link to join my YouTube channel and also my artwork on Instagram and if you need a soul painting or one-to-one -one consultation link is down there below so um, see you soon and thank you for listening bye bye hello cancer Cancer rising, moon or sun. Um, for moon, Leo, second house. Second house being the house of work, self-worth, values. So there can be an opposition between your ex desire to express something. It could be expressing to at your workplace to say, look, I need more uh, <laughs> money for this job. It could be expressing some maybe issues with your partner because eighth house is also intimacy is also partners resources so there can be some sort of a push and pull regarding that so how can we work through that as i mentioned in the overview which i invite you to look at if you haven't done so please do that is to process whatever emotions are coming up um, it could be emotions which is also linked to some subconscious values that we have some conscious patterns that we have so as we deal with those emotions then we can repair whatever is there to build more confidence um, as opposed to just wanting because Leo, full moon Leo might bring up this thing I want I desire I need I have to get it but with this energy of Pluto in the eighth house uh, unless you look at the fears underlying the um, non-ability to say that in a calm way or also the lack of self-worth that you might be dealing with unless we deal with that then the change might be very forceful or difficult with we whoever we is in your um, in your opposite house eighth house could be you, you with whatever group of people you with your partner let's say so um, navigating this through processing the emotion looking also at the truth underlying the circumstances whatever the truth is which is jupiter and how can we bring about that is as i mentioned the first part is through compassion so compassion um, compassion towards ourself <laughs> so being for instance not being in a hurry to push for results so compassion towards also the time it might take to bring back this level of self-confidence or self-worth because these are some of the themes that can come up and also as we bring more self-confidence then we can more easily address those whatever intimacy issues or whatever changes that need to be taking place in the eighth house whether it's changes in whatever intimate relationships changes also in our um, psychological patterns because eighth house is also those deep psychological patterns so it's not about forcing those changes but um, processing them um, working through them with compassion so I hope that makes sense for you uh, make sure you join me on my youtube channel so much videos inc including about emotions etc and instagram as well for artwork and uh, there's also a link on how to get in touch with me um, if you need a soul painting if you need a one-to-one -one consultation so i'll see you again soon thank you and um, all the best bye bye Hello Leo, Leo rising, moon or sun. Um, your full moon then is happening in your house, first house because it's a full moon uh, in Leo. First house is what is the self, is the identity, it can even be the physical body. Full moon there might um, trigger a desire to express oneself, um, maybe to be more visible, maybe to express my own identity, I, 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 especially um, as it is your house, first house. However, um, what 
sort of needs to be looked at is whatever emotions are coming up to be able to help this I and this identity and this self and this body to express itself in a, a way which is um, authentic, non-forceful and uh, also confident. So there might be all wounds that we might that might come up maybe wounds about how um, maybe we've been treated in the past maybe there might be some old sadness that comes through so these things need to be processed because Pluto in the opposite house which is the seventh house is going to like shed a light on this whatever old wounds possibly from old relationships that need to be looked at and healed and then that also reveals some of the truth the truth of what is happening in the seventh house and house being contracts relationships contracts whatever partner work contracts so yes these things maybe need to be changed but not necessarily overnight not necessary in a forceful way actually not in a forceful way because as i mentioned in the first part of the video if you haven't looked at it please go back and look at the overview overview um, there's a pull between this we and the i we being in aquarius i being in leo so um, making sure that we process what we need to also um, before making drastic changes in our partnerships our contracts etc and what can also help us is that um, uh, venus being in capricorn in a very um pretty much stable sign we can be helped through expression so let's say you've got some inner fears that are inner wounds inner angers that you start feeling you can process them also through expression i.e i don't know do you write do you sing do you do sports especially um, through the body because Leo first house body full moon in there so being um, more expressive through the body can help asserting confidence in myself in me so that eventually I can look into necessary changes that can be made uh, regarding the we me and the partner me and my um, work contracts and uh, and also helping this discussion and this um, yeah helping the discussion with grace as opposed to force and uh, yes hope that makes sense to you don't forget to join me on my youtube channel so many videos that can help us actually help you actually process all that i'm talking about and uh, for artwork instagram and um, to book a one-to-one -one consultation or make a soul painting specific to you then the link is in the description box below and um, see you next time and thank you bye bye Hello Virgo rising, a moon or sun. Um, this full moon, can, um, Leo full moon, is in your 12th house. Um, full moon in the 12th house in Leo, um, I would like you. <laughs> it's not gonna, it's not necessarily the easiest placement. Um, Leo being bold and flamboyant, as I mentioned in the overview, if you haven't looked at it, please go back and check this out. Um, Leo being flamboyant, we might want to escape uh, but full moon being there is wanting to look at what's happening behind the scenes so we might want to kind of just want to go out and have fun and distract ourselves but the full moon is asking us to be in solitude maybe maybe to be more to take more time to meditate or to pray maybe it's asking us to kind of uh, reflect on certain maybe even addictions that we might have addictions doesn't have to be like drugs or whatever addictions can be some little addictions right so the full moon is asking us to process to be more at peace but that might not be easy because leo doesn't necessarily encourage that and also because of the pull that is happening on the opposite side with aquarius and pluto uh, sorry with pluto and um and uh, the sun in Aquarius sorry I lost my <laughs> words here um, in the sixth house 
so sixth house is what is the daily routine sixth house is also the house of service so maybe there is a pull to be to get more time alone but because of your work maybe because of your daily routines that can be difficult to attain but how can we attain that is by bringing in um, whatever Venus is inviting us to do is bringing in some sort of maybe compassionate talking maybe to your whatever to your family to your colleagues and say look um, I, I need a bit of time alone so please bear with me for instance and then you take that time alone it's not about shouting the time alone or distracting oneself um, this is how maybe we can assert our need for solitude or at least recognize the need for solitude recognize the need for um, some sort of escapism but healthy escapism because the trouble with the Leo, uh, full moon Leo in the 12th house is that um, there can be a desire for escapism which might be kind of a healthy and and come back at us in our face so it's more about trying to get to this healthy escapism and process whatever there needs to be and maybe there will be some maybe light bulb moments and and things that arise within that time that help us to be more even to, to be more at service, to be more um, at peace and easy with our, with our daily, daily, daily routines, maybe even be more healthy in our daily life. So um, uh, processing the emotion, um, maybe compassionate talking and uh, resisting the need. <laughs> for unhealthy distractions um, this is how maybe we can reach a more true aversion of what we need inside of us or what we feel inside of us and uh, learn to express that more as the full moon fades and the new mood comes later in uh, February um, hope this helps so make sure you join me on Instagram on YouTube there's artwork also have one-to-one um, -one consultations all this link is in the description box so wishing you all the best and uh, see you very soon bye bye Leo, welcome to your specific guidance for the over overview and general guidance, which actually applies to you as well. Make sure you go back and look at the overview. Um, your full moon is happening in the 11th house, um, the Leo full moon of the 25th of January. So it's about groups. It's about um, also hopes and dreams. So there might be some sort of uh, um, big push towards like wanting to change things, wanting to travel, wanting to um, accomplish some big dreams and there are some kind of bubbling emotions that come up there, maybe great excitement, maybe great uh, hopes, but also maybe some other emotions, which is the fear of that also. So all these emotions need to be processed, as I mentioned in the first part of the video. So apart from processing the emotions that come up, um, what is happening in the opposite half of the fifth of the 11th house is the fifth house which is the house of more fun rom romance and uh, creativity so there can be a push and pull there because Pluto in this fifth house is wanting um, is wanting change in this particular area so maybe um, it might be difficult to achieve those hopes and dreams without maybe doing some sacrifice in this other area so there is this thing of like one side um, I want this fun and creativity and at the same time I want those hopes and dreams which are more global and more wider so how can I uh, deal with this push and pull so 
what is helping us, as I mentioned, the first part of the video is Venus. So um, Venus is about expression, is about uh, grace, is about compassion. So let's say you want to make changes um, in your in your romance life, right? In your dating life, let's say. Uh, you can go about it little by little so that you have more time for these big hopes and dreams. Uh, let's say you are actually, um, you have lots of social commitments, which is also the fifth house, or you've got children. Of course, you can't just abandon your children to go and pursue your dreams, but you can make changes little by little, even if Pluto is pushing for massive, <laughs> a massive death and rebirth. So by using the energy of Venus, which is practical also as it is in Capricorn, uh, we can make those changes little by little. So um, learn to process your emotion that are coming up. Um, reveal with Jupiter in a Taurus, reveal what the truth is for you. Uh, learn to look at your more uh, social commitments or family commitments and how you can change that in a graceful way to make um, those um, hopes and dreams happen. Maybe not today on this full moon, but as time goes along. So a key point is uh, um, not going through the conflicting aspect but going through the compromising aspect with patience which is what Jupiter also invites us to do. I um, hope this makes sense and uh, do join me on Instagram there's so much art that I do and uh, on my YouTube channel lots of videos about everything we're talking about here actually and um, if you need a one-to-one -one consultation link in the description box also and um, yeah Libra See you next month. Bye-bye. Hello, Scorpio. This is your specific full moon guidance in Leo. Make sure you go to the overview because um, it's um, possibly the, the most interesting part of all this uh, because it touches everybody. For you specifically, a full moon is in the 10th house. 10th house being house of long-term goals of career, of public recognition, public image also. So the full moon there might kind of push you to um, take center stage in your career and this desire can come up and as the desire come up there might also be some inner emotions that come up such as the fear to be on center stage for instance so it might be helpful for you if you haven't done so to look at the um, Gemini rising because I talk about my personal experience in there and um, and you might be able to relate to that I think so coming back to you um, there is this desire which needs to be expressed obviously however opposite to that um, it does require some changes and Pluto opposite to the 10th house is the fourth Pluto in the fourth house kind of wants to change everything on the home front so as we know oftentimes family home um, and career don't necessarily blend in perfectly it can but we can't be 100% or 200% in all aspects of our life we are only human aren't we <laughs> so um so this desire might be withheld and not we might not be comfortable because of other commitments because of um, changes that we're not comfortable in making so um the linking chain the sort of melting pot will be the inner work around um, maybe any fears that come up fears to lose whatever you already have uh, also fears about this idea of being more visible so doing some inner processing second part is Venus in Capricorn which is about being realistic but also expressing what we need to with grace so maybe communication if that 
if that implies having communication with other people in your home life that can be it can fourth house is also sometimes a mother figure so uh, mother not necessarily mother figure but the sort of uh, all the 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 links that are that are with the mother lineage so there might be some talks that we might need to have on that side so that we can be more at peace about feeling more going more towards our long-term goals so it's about inner work communication and also adjustments so this is how we can make adjustments to go towards our long-term goals um, so does that make sense hopefully it does and if you need um, a soul painting one-to-one -one guidance link is in the description box below and also of course join me on instagram for art and more guidance on my youtube channel description down below bye bye thank you Hello, this is uh, your specific full moon guidance for Sagittarius rising or if you want moon or sun as well. Um, if you haven't looked at the overview, please go back because it, um, it is very uh, global and uh, very specific at the same time. But um, you need a bit of patience to go <laughs> and, um, and listen to that. And actually, patience is a big key word here. I'll explain. Full moon is in the ninth house. Your ninth house is the house of travel, the house of higher learning, the house of philosophy. So you might be compelled to explore, to learn, to expand. This is where the full moon bringing up all these maybe desires, which could have been hidden. However, it might not be easy because it it is contingent upon some changes that need to happen. Opposite of the ninth house, the third house. Third house is about communication, is about um, immediate environment. So there might be some shortcomings there that need to be overcome uh, so that we can more easily um, go towards this higher learning. So maybe there is might, there might be a conflict there between who I interact on a daily basis. So my immediate uh, philosophical circle, let's say, and this higher philosophical maybe pull that I have. So let's say you live, um, third house is communication and daily life, right? So let's say you live with your family and your family is just to give an example, right, is Muslim. Uh, but you are sort of drawn towards whatever, some sort of other spiritual beliefs in happening in the ninth house. So even if you're drawn towards that, it might not be easy to kind of get the approval of others. It might not be easy for you to express what your desires are and get approval for them so there's this push and pull between i and we as i mentioned in the first part of the video i being in leo and we being in aquarius so the way to um to blend this is to accept whatever we're feeling so we might be feeling feeling of injustice feeling of guilt so we need to process all these emotions and um, um and then work with venus which is in capricorn venus is capricorn is uh, about uh, being um, sort of fair in a way it's not about being pushy so we need to learn maybe to work respect the differences so let's say either i gave the example of your sort of immediate environment and your higher philosophical values it's not because i decide that I want to go for, um, to another philosophical value that whatever is around me is is less worth. It's not because I want to change that whatever is there is less worth it. So we might need to learn to respect more the differences that are around us uh, whilst acknowledging the fact that we need maybe some other perspective, some other open openness to other forms of spirituality of travel or whatever it is but 
at the same time respecting the differences and uh, um, being diplomatic and this is where Venus is is a bit of grace <laughs> mm, yes so um, hope this helps and make sure you join me on Instagram on YouTube and uh, if you need a one-to-one -one, uh, consultation or soul painting link also is in the description box so wishing you the best and um, see you soon bye bye Hello, time for Capricorn rising, Capricorn sun or moon also if you want to. I usually advise to look at the rising sign but um, if not you're welcome also here. Your full moon is in the 8th house. 8th house is a bit uh, house of the subconscious so um, I'd be very surprised <laughs> if nothing from your subconscious sort of comes to the surface and um, what can come up it depends on you on your life on your chart and also depends how much you are in touch with your own emotions and uh, the more you learn to be in touch with your emotions it can be for simple ways as in taking time every day to breathe in and breathe out and see how you feel so just by doing this every day um, you definitely will be more in touch with your emotions so especially um, with uh, you Capricorn so um, no offense <laughs> you can be probably more very um, down to earth and direct or direct minded so um, learning to be more in touch with your emotions can definitely help to um, make this full moon a bit to make sense of this full moon um, so a full moon is also in this house of shared resources so there might be some um, feelings that come up around that so it's also about intimacy so that there, there might be some doubts feelings fears um, whatever that come up so all these things on need to need to be processed absolutely I talked about this in this overview at the beginning of the video um, but more so for you I think um, please do go and watch this so dealing with those emotions when we feel a bit more at peace then we can look at the changes that need to be made Pluto um, is in the opposite sign of Aquarius so if you are eighth house Pluto is in the second house so second house is the house of work the house of uh, mm, self-worth also so there might be the, the house of security also so there might be changes that need to be made that are a bit difficult or fear that we fear so there might be changes in our whatever is secure that needs to be made so that the full moon issues or the full moon f uh, whatever feelings that are coming up can be more at peace so sometimes we need to make it doesn't have to be massive changes it can be little changes in our um, maybe just in the way that we where we find security so maybe just shifting a little bit the perception of where we find security can help us uh, get maybe be more happy in our intimacy for instance just maybe little changes in uh, uh, maybe the work environment not necessarily changing the work but change little changes in the work environment can help us feel more secure can f help us feel uh, more at our place so um, second house eighth house is um, not the easiest to kind of navigate but the more um, you deal with your emotions the more you don't press for change and uh, the less you fear for change as well the easier it will be and what is helping us is Venus and luckily Venus is in your sign Venus is in Capricorn so hopefully it will give you some um, uh, time and energy and uh, desire to be more patient with yourself 
and to embark on this change little by little by embracing more whatever is under the surface in your inner um, desires because the full moon is about those inner feelings and inner desires so yeah so change yes but change with compassion um, and also security is a big thing for this full moon for you so wishing you the best wishing you good luck um, make sure you go to my channel I think for you specifically all the guidance I give might be very interesting so join me on my YouTube channel and also join me on Instagram and um, book a one-to-one -one if you need consultation see you soon and thank you very much bye bye Hello Aquarius, um, your full moon, Leo full moon on the 25th of January is happening in your 7th house. 7th house is the house of partnership, the house of relationships, of contracts. So um, full moon will bring up certain things that need to be looked at, maybe some adjustments that need to be made, also adjustments that you kind of feel needs to be made in this aspect of your life. and. Uh, uh, depending on your personality and depending also on your own personal birth chart um, it might be very pressing you might feel the urge and the desire to express this need for change or on the opposite it might be that you are reluctant to change that also it's astrology is a guidance astrology is a sort of a road but the specific traffic lights and the specific roundabouts it depends also on you on your journey on your personality on your specific chart but just to make this kind of uh, uh, general for most of you um, I would say that there are changes that are that you feel are necessary regarding contracts regarding your partnership maybe even regarding your marriage you might kind of have some emotions very high emotions that come up these emotions need to be processed as I mentioned in the overview of this video which I invite you to look at it is very important I believe so uh, these things need to be processed what's happening is on the opposite side of um, Leo full moon is the fact that there is Pluto in your own sign so in your own sign Pluto is asking you to make some sort of is asking you to kind of be in a way more selfish so again depending on your personality depending on your chart if you're somebody who finds it easier to please others than to be more selfish then of course that might bring lots of chaotic thoughts how do I go about this I need to change but I don't know how to change um, this needs this can't be the same but actually I'm used to doing this for the other so there is the me and the we is even kind of more uh, proactive in your case so how we can um, learn to work through that is really by uh, being the clearest you can in your own thoughts so Jupiter which is um, happening in Taurus is a very grounded Taurus a very grounded space so the more you can be um, you can calm your thoughts the more you can write down your thoughts the more you can kind of get to the underlying truth the easier it will be to see what are changes that you need to be that need to be made and how you can express your own uh, needs your own desires because sometimes the change we often think of Pluto as big massive change but sometimes it's not necessarily the change in the environment sometimes it's to the change within us so um, making sure you write down your thoughts making sure you get a little bit to the truth of the matter making sure you process your emotions and then only you can communicate with um, Venus being in Capricorn uh, 
ask us to be a bit down to earth and graceful at the same time so maybe communicate with grace communicate with compassion and at the same time holding your ground to is it your whatever is it your work partners is it your partner in life i don't know that's up to you and this is um communicate with this compassion but that will be contingent upon uh, getting those high emotions a bit calmer um, getting the thoughts clearer to make sure that we are not sort of mixing up what is um, what is fair what is unfair otherwise we can easily get into the blame game sometimes there is a need to but sometimes there isn't a need to so um, make sure you go through this in a very um, truthful way truthful to yourself and then truthful to the other yes <laughs> so yeah hopefully that helps join me on instagram on youtube link in the description box below and um and also if you need a soul painting which is specific to you that's also there and a one-to-one -one consultation as well thank you for joining me and see you soon bye bye Hello, welcome Pisces rising, moon or sun. Uh, your full moon in Leo is happening in the sixth house. Sixth house is a house of health, house of uh, service also. So with this full moon, you might sort of have a sudden urge to make uh, changes in whatever healthy habits you might want to make. There might be sudden urge to kind of uh, serve it could be, I don't know, join a charity or whatever. These are those sort of feelings that can bubble up that sometimes maybe you might not even know were there. So as we take time to acknowledge what we're feeling, then um, we can make appropriate change. The thing is that opposite this full moon, there is um, Pluto in the 12th house. 12th house is pretty much the house of... Um, hidden things so sometimes to make those changes that we want or the inner callings we need to be looking at some stuff happening in the 12th house so there might be let's say uh, suddenly um, you feel it really in your body that okay i need to do more sports let's say but you've got a tendency <laughs> to maybe um, watch TV all the time let's say some sort of addiction so Pluto in this 12th house is asking us to change that addiction to change that um, mentality so that we can be more um, true to what we need what we inner our inner self most needs so also it can be that let's say um, you have the desire to be of service suddenly you kind of feel this desire okay i need to be of service how we can achieve that pluto in the 12th house maybe is asking you to look more at your spiritual dimension even if maybe that's not something you kind of want to or thought about but possibly it's just an example because each one of us has got have got different charts and different uh, not just different charts but different lives different personalities different uh, roads so it's not as clear-cut as that but these are just kind of ways that it can play out so how can we how can we help that is um, because the 12th house is also the house of hidden things and the house of of um, whatever is old so there can be some old wounds that need to be looked at and that need to be healed um, because sometimes just making change on a superficial level is not enough it, the change has to we need to be at peace with this change let's say you're because full mood is in the sixth house let's say suddenly you want to become a I don't know let's say an energy healer right let's say and you're like okay yeah this I think um, I can do that I've always been told I've got some gifts and whatever and all that but if if you yourself are not a bit healed or pretty healed 
um, it might be difficult to achieve this service on a authentic way. I'm not saying that we can't be a healer if we're not a totally that we have to be totally healed to be a healer but I'm saying that in this case um, there is a need to be truthful to oneself to whatever is underneath before we can be as we can be in service to others or we need to look at our own addictions before we can um, in order to kind of be healthier so the key here is uh, Venus in Capricorn. Venus in Capricorn is very much down to earth and uh, Capricorn is linked with the practicality. So the more you're in touch with your body, i.e. just in the morning, let's say, just see how you feel and what you what your body needs. Maybe it's crying for you might think that it needs great change, but sometimes just little change can make can be one step maybe you need more juice every day it's just an example so being in touch with the body uh, being in touch also more with nature it might help because of venus there in this 12th house so it can be nice with venus in capricorn to be near the earth to be near nature so all these things can help us um, and also it can also be practically so those healing in this uh, 12th house there can be helped through practical uh, practical ways so practical ways with Venus in Capricorn is maybe yes acknowledging yes I need I need to do some I need therapy or I need um, whatever a healer so these things can help uh, make this full moon in Leo more potent and more um, practically um, realistic because it's not on the full moon that everything will change it's just the full moon is bringing this to the surface and then as we deal with more the plutonian aspect and the 12th house aspect then th then by the next uh, new moon or even later then we can more easily bring those healthy habits or bit of service yes i hope this makes sense for you of course if you need a one-to-one -one consultation you're welcome to do so the link is in the description box below and make sure you join me on my in instagram and youtube channel also yes and um, hope to see you again here or there somewhere <laughs> bye bye Hello Aries, welcome to this part which is your specific guidance part um, for an overview and also for some uh, great guidance please look at the first part of this video I'm sure it will help you but um, for you this uh, Leo full moon on the 25th is happening in your fifth house fifth house is the house of creativity the house of fun the house of romance and um, full moon will bring up uh, certain urges might bring up certain desires to let's say um, you didn't realize it but suddenly you kind of think oh actually I've always wanted to sing I do want to sing it's like it kind of bubbles up under the surface so there is an opportunity there or even a need to be expressive it might be even to express your feelings to somebody there might be this kind of utmost irresistible kind of desire that comes up to the surface but as all full moons and especially with Pluto um, in opposition um, it might not be easy to do so because there might be feelings that come up there might be some fears could be fears of rejection fears of not being good enough and all these things so these fears for instance need to be looked at and this is how this is why we need to process whatever emotions are coming up um, Again, this is uh, I've talked about this in this first part of the video and then with the opposition um, the expression is me yeah me I want to express this and I want to do this but the opposite side uh, the opposite of the fifth house is actually the 
um, 11th house so the house of groups the house of friends the house of others so there might be a fear of like what others might say and also there might be maybe not enough time because maybe um, maybe you you like or you're used to spending a lot of time with others and so there's not enough time for your own creativity so there is there might be a need to change um, maybe something around your groups group activities to be able to allow yourself more time for self-expression this is just one example right so or even in romance let's say you kind of have this desire to express your love to somebody um, um, but you very well know that you can't really engage in a relationship because because you tend to spend a lot of time with your friends or your friends are very demanding so uh, then there is needs to be a, a change that happens in this other area of life which is where the Pluto is in Aquarius in the opposite of the fifth house which is the eleventh house so how can we do this practically is uh, apart from acknowledging how we feel and acknowledging whatever feelings come up and processing them uh, we can ground this practically Venus is in Capricorn remember so it means that um, what can I do to work towards it for instance can I um, let's say I want to suddenly I don't know sing and play the keyboard um, do I have the time do I have the means to buy this keyboard maybe not so but doesn't mean that I can't work towards it I can still watch some videos about how to I don't know how to play some chords I can watch some videos especially now with YouTube so much stuff out there I can watch some videos on how to improve my voice before I go and have the means to buy a keyboard or take less singing lessons for instance so uh, Venus is asking us to go about this uh, with a bit of compassion so um, yes um, definitely acknowledge the feeling definitely process the emotion definitely make adjust adjustments to whatever group settings you have and also take the Mm, be graceful with yourself and patient with yourself in how you implement this uh, expressive energy which might be bursting <laughs> within you so talk about expressive energy make sure you join me on my instagram account um, the link is in the description box as well as uh, join me on my youtube channel so much guidance there and of course if you need a one-to-one -one consultation or painting soul painting um, again you can get in touch with me Hope Hopefully all this helps and I'll see you very soon. Thank you. Last but not least, Taurus. Taurus uh, rising specifically, but also moon and sun if you, if you so desire. Um, the orphan moon is happening in the fourth house. Fourth house is the house of roots, of foundations, of home, also the house of emotions. So the full moon in this house can bring up to the surface uh, many emotions regarding family, regarding home, regarding your roots, etc. So first thing first is to acknowledge and process those emotions as I talked in the overview of the video which I will invite you to look at if you haven't done so yet so um, first is to process those emotions and recognize the need maybe there's a need for change a need for better understanding a need for to speak the truth to my family also it can be that so as I acknowledge those needs that come up and I process those emotions to feel more at ease with with expressing my needs or expressing my truth or acknowledging my truth as I'm more at peace with that um, I will also have to deal with what's happening in the other side which is Pluto there which is on the um, in your so fourth house that means Pluto will be in your uh, tenth house right tenth house is the house up there career etc so it might not be easy to express all this and to make those changes because maybe there is a need also to um, make some adjustments regarding your career regarding your long-term plans so um, 
if we accept that yes I need a change in my home life or I need to yes I need a change in my home life but maybe there is a need that needs there is a change that needs to be made in my career life so that I can be happier in my home life so I can I need to overcome that fear of change first and then um, make adjustments in the other side of my life which is Pluto is kind of forcing us in a way to make this adjustment but um, as I said in the overview Venus is also there Venus is in Capricorn and Venus is asking us to do all this with a fair share of grace a fair share of compassion so um, especially with the pull and push and pull between career and and uh, personal life um, it might not happen overnight so be truthful to yourself um, be truthful maybe to others involved but definitely um, be graceful and patient with the change that can be made so in the meantime how can you use that energy to make that change um, with Venus um, you can definitely create your dream world in your head let's say you need you want a change of home or you feel the need of change of home but you can't implement this now because of the career maybe you can start talking to your boss and say look at some point I will need a change or I will make a change uh, in the meantime also in your head you can design your new home and you can write about your new home and uh, and bring this imaginative energy of Venus into practice as time goes along um, sort of after the full moon yes so um, hope this makes sense for you and uh, definitely do join me on um, yeah on my different platforms YouTube Instagram and if you need more help on a one-to-one -one level then the link is also in the description box so I wish you all the best this is also the end of the video and uh, see you very soon bye bye